Peace, love, and about a hair grease. I'm Shadi Gemini. We're turning for another amazingly amazing video. Okay, once again, I do apologize for my absence. Um, just like everybody else, I do have a life. I do have things that I take care of. And um, I just am the type of person where, you know, I need a lot of alone time. Okay, but in the midst of my alone time, I have not forgotten my purpose. I have not forgotten, you know, what I'm supposed to do. Okay, so I the time away, like I said, it's not in vain. The time away uh, that I seem to do when I don't post videos often is because nine times out of ten, I'm either dealing with work, um, external and internal issues, but I always uh, make a lesson from them so I can come and do my work, which is this right here. Okay, um, I just wanted to say. Uh, Thank y'all just for once again supporting me, loving me, being there for me, um, riding with me, for commenting on my videos, sending me emails. Once again, I greatly appreciate it. And once again, forgive me for my absence, okay? So, I'm making this video because uh, not only is it Scorpio season, but it is the new moon. Um, the new moon is occurring tomorrow. Uh, I live on the West Coast, so it's about 10 p.m. right now. So, I thought I'd get it cracking. And based on the experiences I've been going through recently, I feel like this was the perfect time for me to uh, work with this energy because uh, Scorpio is ruled by Pluto and Pluto is the most prominent planet in my chart. So the themes that go on through the season and the themes that go on in regards to Scorpio are themes that I live every day. And these themes have brought me into my purpose. All right. So... Without further ado, let's get into it. Now, I do want to make a disclaimer that I don't want to be, because I'm trying to figure out, you know, trying to figure everything out within myself and what I want to do and how I want to portray myself, okay? So I want to, all like I told you, always be authentic, always keep it real, okay? I don't want to be a cookbook astrologer. I don't want to be a commercial-ass astrologer and just tell you, you know, the things that, certain zodiac signs do in regards to lower octave or third dimensional shit like oh okay gemini's like to talk and cancers like food and fucking you know tauruses like to spend a lot of money i don't want to do that okay so every time that i come with a astrology video um it's always going to be something deeper in the octaves with these with these energies um to get y'all to really understand why these things exist okay they don't exist for newspaper to for newspapers to be throwing you know horoscopes and that shit and then just portraying it as oh this is what you're going to experience today okay so everything that i do i do it with death i do it with authenticity and i do it with truth okay so in regards to scorpio season and the scorpio new moon that is transpiring now um there are a lot of themes like I said, that has been transpiring within me that I had to share um, and to kind of get y'all to understand uh, really not only what's going on with all these planetary energies. Like I said, a lot of it's a lot of shifts that, are, that is going on. OK, and if you're not on the wave, you might be struggling with these shifts because, you know, you're not you're basically out of tune with yourself. OK, or you out of tune with something that you need to connect with. I should say rather okay so let's get into it all right so pluto scorpio is basically the eighth house in the birth chart okay so we just left libra season with this which is the seventh house okay so we're dealing with libra season um libra season is about uh diplomacy uh give and take it is the seventh house so it's the house of partnership the house of the other um and obviously the house of balance because it represents the scales um and it's also ruled by Venus. So it deals with um, just love and, like I said, just interpersonal relationship. It doesn't have to necessarily be with partners, but just in regards to uh, business partners, friends, maybe even co coworkers, things like that, okay? So with Libra season, Libra season just asks you to, um, or the seven houses really is the house of just can we bond or can we uh, communicate or compromise or compromise with one another on a intellectual level okay can we get along can we mesh well together can we give and take together okay those are the things that libra encompasses just balances 
within relationships. It's kind of superficial a little bit because it does, it, uh, Libra is an air sign. Okay, so, um, so this is where partnerships are just initially formed. Okay, now moving into Scorpio into the eighth house, once that partnership is formed, now things start to escalate in those partnerships, particularly romantic relationships. So dealing with uh, eighth house themes such as merging and bonding, uh, sex, uh, can we share joint assets, can we share income together, can we uh, deeply and intimately get to know each other outside of the superficiality that is represented kind of by our Libra. When I mean superficiality, not in a bad way, but you know, Libra season kind of just scratches the surface, or it's kind of like the opening to a partnership or opening to the other, okay? So when dealing with Pluto, Scorpio, and the eighth house, okay, you have to ask first, let's identify what Pluto is. So Pluto is obviously, I consider Pluto a planet. You not, they not about to do my mans like that and say that my mans ain't a planet. Pluto's a planet, okay? Fuck what you heard. All right, so Pluto is obviously the furthest planet away from the sun. It's the coldest. When you look at it um, in the um, pictures, um, it's a very small planet. It's a dwarf planet. Planet. It's very cold. Uh, so the further you are away from the sun, and in, in, in regards to planets, uh, the colder it's going to be. So it's basically a big ball, big dark ball of ice. All right, um, and it's kind of the planet of darkness. So. Pluto or Scorpio, the eighth house. Basically, Pluto represents, um, and I have notes here because I had to organize my thoughts. Um, so Pluto is basically the planet of renewal, transformation, birth, death, and just the things that no longer serve us. Okay, the things that we need to get rid of, the things that we need to shed. Think of it like a snake skin. Okay, every so often a, a snake has to shed its skin to actually... Uh, renew itself okay so it's about reinventing the inner self okay um this is where like i said old habits must die and must be reborn um pluto also rules sex taboos and secrets okay it's not like the 12th house or the house of pisces where secrets are hidden from you these are the things that um you are aware of but you tend to hide them all right uh, Pluto is also the planet of the occult and the planet of darkness. All right. So even uh, when you listen to Panic or when you listen to Bobby Hemet, uh, Panic has a big emphasis on self transformation. So this is what he, this is kind of the theme of what he puts an emphasis on of self transformation. Okay. And now with Pluto, Pluto is a very unconscious planet. Pluto is the type of planet that is not going to let you get away with your bullshit. Pluto forces you to face the things that you choose to suppress. Okay. So it's not like the 12th house where, or Pisces, where, you know, you can repress it all you want. It might be elusive and it, it might just stay there. It might come up once in a while, but you might have to deal with those things too. But Pluto is, uh, it makes you face your trauma okay so when you face your trauma when you face your demons you are able to reassess them conquer them shed that snake skin that needs to be shed shed that old patterns whether it's people habits that you have that no longer serve you all right um pluto is also about personal power and when i mean personal power personal power meaning uh power that no one can take away from you so depending on where pluto is in your birth chart um this determines uh depending on the house that it is it determines in what area of life that you uh need to seek out transformation or need to face uh that house theme in order to transform yourself okay and i have stated that in my previous videos all right um pluto being the type of planet it is is a planet of extremes okay so like i said before um it deals with trauma so a lot of people who are have a lot of scorpio planets or a lot of planets in the eighth house or things like that um they've been through some shit okay i can attest to this i have a lot of friends who are have some scorpio planets or maybe have planets in the eighth house and they've been through some shit because pluto deals with deep dark ass trauma whether it's being molested whether it's experiencing a death um in a in a family with your family friends or whoever's close to you um whether it's coming to near-death experiences as well these are all the things that deal with pluto and they may hurt 
and they may burn, but you need to face these in order to transform and to be new, okay? Because if you don't, the negative aspect of Pluto is um, if you don't own your Pluto, if you don't come face to face with your Pluto, this may cause you to be self-destructive. So a lot of times when I meet Scorpios, um, some Scorpios that I have met, they haven't, they have a lot of personal power. You can feel it just from the aura of the, how they carry themselves. But some of them um, haven't dealt with their old habits or haven't shed their old habits, such as emotional manipulation, control, obsession, things like that. So I like to give the example where if a Scorpio is not healed, um, everything that they touch, they will destroy because um, they haven't dealt with shit with themselves, okay? And that type of energy, um, like I said, if not handled correctly, it will just force you to uh, be self-destructive, all right, within the self, okay? So you really have to pay attention to that. So Pluto and Scorpio also rules psychology, the realm of psychology, because the positive aspect of Pluto and Scorpio is the ability to be able to uh, analyze, uh, psychoanalyze not only the self, but only others as well. So this is why sometimes they say, you know, Scorpios can pick up the motives of other people, even when that other person doesn't realize it. That's Pluto. Pluto is a very probing, deep investigative, okay, what is the truth? Cut through the bullshit, what is the fucking truth? You know what I'm saying? That's Pluto. And me being a Plutonian and having these experiences within myself, because like I said, Pluto is a very, the strongest planet in my chart. I have like, what, over four aspects in my birth chart that's dealing with Pluto. So I deal with these themes on a daily fucking basis, even in my relationships and my friendships and even with the people I come across. And Pluto energy is very intimidating. So those who can't can't handle the can't handle it, I mean, they run away because it scares them. It uh, and I, like I said, just from my personal experience, I realize now that I have the ability to uh, shine light or to uh, not even subconsciously probe, but to kind of bring things out of people that they rather not deal with at that time. Okay, because it's very hurtful. Um, they're afraid to admit it. I've experienced this really throughout my entire life, okay? And now that I understand the type of power I possess, that is my power, that is the power that I claim. I have that ability. It hurts, it has its gifts and its curses, but I'm glad I have it, okay? So, uh, with Pluto, once you face your darkness, your trauma, um, it's like the phoenix rising from ashes. And yes, you know, the phoenix hates being burnt the fuck alive. So, uh, with Pluto, Pluto just is a planet of extremes. So, um, it's going to make you face really hard shit if you don't deal with it properly. And But from that pain that you experience, whether it's from assessing yourself, relationships, losses, and things like that, um, comes personal power. Okay, so Pluto isn't here to punish. It's just here, it just forces you to claim your power in your darkest hour. All right, so um, that's that. Just real quick. Also, the eighth house um, or Scorpio is the house of finances as well because it's the opposite of Taurus. So you can't talk about one side without talking about the other. So the opposite of Scorpio is Taurus. Okay, they both are the money houses, the second house and the eighth house. Okay, on the celestial will, if you were to do, you know, a natal chart reading on yourself or if you were to see or analyze a chart. Okay, so um, with the eighth house, like I said, this deals with joint finances. So Taurus deals with your own personal income, how you make your own income, and what's the opposite of that? The opposite of that is other people's income, you know, other people's uh, assets. And it's going to also deal with uh, inheritances as well. So um, that's why they say in mythology that Hades um, had the most riches of all the gods because he was in the underworld. So you can kind of get that from that mythology kind of apply this to that energy as well okay so even when you're talking about Hades and Greek mythology um look at Persephone Persephone um was obviously a uh, diameter's daughter um he Hades forced himself uh on Persephone brought her to the underworld you know what I'm saying she tried to fight it but at the end of the day you know she wasn't going nowhere she accepted that so six months out the year she would spend time with in the underworld six months uh half of the year the rest of the year she would spend time uh with her mother on earth you know what i'm saying and from that she had to learn you know kind of 
things about herself from being in the underworld okay so um i had to meditate on it but i had the perception that persephone you know she was just living her life just maybe on a superficial level and be and it's because of that experience with her with hades um she had to uh delve into the darkness she had to deal with some shit that she didn't want to deal with but once she faced it and came to terms with it and up benefiting her um in her own way okay so like i said that is pluto that is the uh all the aspects of pluto and just higher higher and lower octaves of this energy or, or pluto scorpio is uh, so the higher octaves would be uh, a sense of personal power, strong will, the ability to really conquer everything, resilience. Um, Pluto, Scorpio, eighth house. This is the planet of resilience. So once you're able to face trauma, um, really throughout your life, face it head on and be honest with it about yourself, um, there's really nothing that you can't conquer. You know what I'm saying? There's really nothing that can really stand in your way because uh, Scorpio is also ruled by Mars. So Mars and Pluto uh, are the rulers or Scorpio. Now, Pluto is a higher octave of Mars, okay, because Mars is very direct. Mars is the type of energy that acts now and then thinks later. Act now and then acts questions later. You know what I'm saying? But Pluto is more controlled. So the desires that, the same desires that Mars have is the same desires that Pluto have. But Pluto doesn't act on it as impulsively as Mars does. It's more controlled. Um, it's more uh, internalized. It's more uh, kind of, it's more not felt, but it's just really just more internalized. It's more uh, probing. So the way that Pluto handles its obsessions and possessions and things like that is just through, I don't want to say manipulative ways, but in very, you know, okay, let me sit back. Okay, let me see how I can do this with this, with this to get what I want. Compared to Mars, where Mars was just like, I want what I want right now. So fuck you know thinking about some shit and let me go get it right now okay so that's kind of the difference between mars and pluto and you can kind of understand this when dealing with the energy of scorpio okay um another uh higher octave of pluto like i said it's changed the phoenix rising from the ashes is the perfect example of that shit okay and another example uh another sign or another i'm sorry another animal that is represented by scorpio as well is the snake and the eagle all right, so the snake, as I stated before, sheds old skin. So you can kind of understand that energy uh, and relate it to Pluto and Scorpio. Okay, so when a, sh a snake sheds its old skin, that's done, that's that's gone. You know what I'm saying? It's left behind, and it's it's new skin. It's something new. It's something never felt before. And you know that snake is just uh, moving on to a new, uh, just a new chapter in its life, in a sense. Okay. Um, also, like I said, Pluto deals with sex, okay? So, uh, I'm not talking about regular sex like Mars. Mars is, okay, I want what I want now. I'm not letting nobody get to that, okay? But Pluto likes passion during sex, okay? But Pluto on a higher octave has the ability to heal others through sex because Pluto allows, uh, Pluto's a type of energy or Scorpio's a type of energy where um, it wants to see your all, okay? It wants to see every aspect of yourself whether it's the good bad ugly uh the trifling uh all that okay so pluto wants to see you as you are pluto wants to strip you naked okay and wants to see you at your core okay so this is why sex is very powerful for scorpios or very powerful for pluto because um it just eliminates the ego and it just gets to the nitty-gritty it just gets to the the core of the human being or the call of the the being that's participating in sex okay um the lower octave of scorpio i mean or uh pluto would be probably um obsession possession uh, cruelty sexual misconduct this is where rape and all those things come in as well um self-destructive i explained that earlier uh selfishness uncontrolled desires now with pluto and even mars too um like I said, I've experienced this in my turn. I have to learn this. Every desire that you have cannot be acted upon, okay? So uh, I think Pluto has a more understanding of this than Aries does or that Mars does because Mars is ruled by Aries. Pluto is also ruled by Mars too. But like I said, I mean, I'm sorry, Scorpio is also ruled by Mars too, but um, they're different. Like I said, Pluto is more controlled, wants the same desires, but does it, in a psychological way 
Mars and Aries is more action oriented, okay? Uh, and like I said, love lower octave, sexual and emotional manipulation. And all of these things are subconscious. And all of these things stem from the desire to have power and control over others or over something, okay? Because Pluto is a very powerful, powerful planet. It deals with uh, personal power and at its negative octave power over others, all right? So um, I did pull some cards um, to kind of try to explain, you know, the not even the things that you should be or the things that are going to occur or because, you know, Scorpio moon is in this house. So that means you can no, I'm not even going to do that because uh, that's not me. But um, when you're dealing with this type of energy, especially in the season, um, one main thing is you're going to have to whatever loss that you may have. OK, if you are experiencing some loss. Um, you have to look at what you have left, okay? And that's something that I have really been realizing myself because I don't tell y'all shit or I don't want to be that type of person who tells y'all shit and I'm not actually implementing it in my life, okay? That's not the type of person I want to be. That's not who I am. I want to keep it 100. I want to keep it a buck because I don't believe in not being authentic. That's just not who I am, okay? So really in this new more, in this time, if you are experiencing some loss, whatever it may be, it might not even be a relationship, just look at what you have left, okay? Especially if you're on the path, you know what I'm saying? You're doing the work, you are you actually have a thirst for knowledge, you actually want to know the mysteries of life. Look at what the fuck what you have left, okay? Um, don't obsess, don't beat yourself up. Whatever is transpiring in your life, reassess and ask yourself honestly. Do honest self-reflection. Okay, and honest self-reflection can hurt because the ego wants to think of itself as perfect. And I told y'all in my la in, uh, my previous videos that when you become, begin to get into the spiritual, the um, when you begin into the to get into the spiritual, the ego recognizes that, and the ego will do whatever it takes to try to survive. Okay, so it would tell you anything. It would kind of conflict with the knower that's within you okay so you have to really be careful with that so in regards to any loss that you may have uh please reassess what the fuck got you there okay because you have to take accountability of where you are as well okay outside first forces and other people yeah they have an influence but what did you do all right to um get yourself there as well now Scorpio energy isn't, or Pluto energy isn't really easy for a lot of people to deal with, okay? Change is very uncomfortable. And what Pluto does is Pluto forces you to change, okay? And in that forcing you to change, Pluto puts trauma in your life or puts you to a, through a traumatic experiences. Like I said, whether it's death, dealing with relationships, things like that. Pluto allows you to feel tremendous pain. But like I said in my last videos, turning transfer, transforming pain into power is what you do with that pain that matters, okay? Because facing that pain head on gives you another opportunity to move forward and to actually be cognizant of what the fuck that you have left, okay? And some things especially when you're doing on the path and you want to learn more, um, some things are not going to serve you because where you're going, other people cannot go with you, okay? So you might run across situations, of, and this is obvious, you might run across situations, you might run across people um, who come into your life and they are here to teach you something to prepare you for what the fuck you ask for. And a lot of times we manifest in shit and we're trying to ask for shit we don't think we have to go through some type of initiation or some type of preparation in order to get there. And that's the issue. And at the time, obviously, you might not understand it. But if you know that you came here for a reason, if you know that you are not just an ordinary person, you've always been different as a child, things like that, 
you should the knowing you should know okay i'm experiencing this why and that why is this is your initiation process in order to get what you ask for whether it's prosperity whether it's more enlightenment you have to go through some type of initiation process and that initiation process is not easy at all all right so you must have the fortitude and the understanding to really be cognizant or not or to try to take the things that happen to you in a sense of detachment and i know that sound sounds kind of oblivious because when you're dealing with pain and when you're dealing with trauma it's just like, well, how the fuck am I supposed to do that? What do you mean I got to detach? It's just a simple fact that you're not going to stay in that position forever. What you choose to do with that pain that you're feeling is really up to you. You sit in it, you recognize it, but you don't stay there. And from that pain, like I said, comes great power. This is all the themes that deals with Scorpio. And if that power is not dealt with, you can cause your own self-destruction. And you have to be careful with causing your own self-destruction because a lot of people who do that really um, tend to be victims, okay? Because they're not facing the things that they need to face or facing the things that they subconsciously know they need to face, okay? So confront your journey, clear your baggage, reassess what the fuck is no longer serving you okay and also venus is in retrograde as well so uh i've been noticing too a lot of people's relationships have been doing a lot of trying and testing especially since it's scorpio season too so when venus when the planet is in retrograde it's just asking you to take a step back and to reassess so if venus is the planet of relationships or the planet of relating all it's just asking you is, okay take a step back what is that you really want is this something that you want when dealing with relationships is this something that you um is this something that you want to deal with with dealing relationships? Can you see yourself dealing with this shit? Or can you see yourself being involved with something like this 10 years from now, 5 years from now, 15 years from now? That's what Venus Retrograde is here to teach you. Okay? So, um, even with that being said, I know a lot of people tend to focus on a lot, a lot of with fucking twin flames and relationships and shit, which is cool. But I think I told somebody in my comments like the other day, don't get caught up in focusing on twin flames. Because at the end of the day, this is a solo journey. You are here to um, ascend yourself. Okay? Only you can save you. I say that all the time. Only you can save you. So um, if you happen to meet your twin flame in this um, existence, I mean, in this lifetime, cool. Good for you. But the whole purpose of getting the spirituality is to not be so obsessed with finding your twin flame. You know what I'm saying? And then living happily ever after. Because if that was the case, where's the growth in that? You know what I'm saying? Where is the uh, where's the transformation in that? If you find your twin flame and everything just easy peasy for the rest of your life. And nine times out of ten, that's really unrealistic. Especially if you are, like I said, on the path, want to learn more, you know, want to get in tune with yourself, want to try to figure out who you are, where you came from, things like that. All right? So... Cause I'm looking at my cards right now. I pull tarot cards, okay? So, um, even with the Venus, Venus retrograde, I pulled the Queen of Cups, okay? So the Queen of Cups, um, the message I got from the Queen of Cups is uh, really have emotional intelligence. That's obvious. That should just be something that should be known, okay? However, do not afraid to be vulnerable. Um, if you even when dealing with relationships, you might go through a lot of trial and error to get the relationship that you asked for. Okay? It may be some karma that you need to clear. It may be some lessons that you need to learn. Like I said, this is your initiation process to get what the fuck that you asked for. So, um, even when after you clear everything that you're going through or everything that old baggage or the shit that's keeping you away from the death card which is the perfect card for this fucking energy because the death card is actually this card of scorpio okay i got the death card in the reverse and the death card in reverse represents um resisting change or holding on to things that no longer serve you okay because like i said death is not a uh bad thing 
I'm not talking about physical death, but I'm just talking about death of old habits, death of, you know, things that you're doing or the same people that you're attracting that are no longer serving. Okay. So once you've healed that, eliminate that and reassess that properly, this is what the, what is this? The, uh, six of swords reverse says, uh, cause the six of swords upright is represents moving from, um, a place of turmoil into basically clearer waters okay but since that's in reverse um that just represents blockages from keeping you from moving forward okay into those calmer waters so you really have to assess okay what is it in myself that's not that's preventing me from moving forward and from getting what i deserve and like i said that comes with honest self-evaluation all right it may hurt it may suck and a loss might seem like the end of the fucking world but go through your feelings five of cups do what you gotta do but look at what you have left don't get so fucking focused on what you lost to the point that you neglect see the cup still standing in the five of cups don't forget to neglect what you have left and obviously, I, I can't sit here and tell you that. You have to figure that on your own. All right? But um, you have to break a cycle. You have to break the cycle. Something is preventing uh, a lot of people uh, go through this world and wonder why they're attracting the same shit because they're not preventing the cycle. And you really have to be in tune. You really have to be intuitive um, to see... Um, what is it that is keeping me from, like I say, getting that which I know I deserve? All right. In the meantime, when you go on through all that, take care of yourself. Queen of Pentacles. Queen of Pentacles is all about nurturing yourself, doing what you love to do, um, t attending to yourself. Okay. So whether it's watching occult lectures whether it's going out with your friends, just even simple shit going out with your friends, reading a book, things like that. But you have to go inward. Also, with the Queen of Pentacles, okay, this card here about taking care of yourself, okay, um, it's okay to be alone. It's okay. A lot of people have the innate fear of being alone, and that stems from codependency. And like I said, with diving deep, and understanding and reassessing yourself you have to uh really look at really that stems from let's keep it real something not being provided um in childhood okay so you use people a lot of people now especially in my generation in the between 20 and 30 uh they have a fear of being alone out of codependency out of fear of just being by themselves so with queen of pentacles it's okay to be alone it's okay to do shit by yourself i do it all the fucking time i go out by myself i go to dinner by myself i go to bars by myself and i meet great people you know what i'm saying so do not afraid to be alone it's okay to be alone because like tiffany Essinger said check out her page too uh your solitude is your protection and like i stated before this is a solo journey Nobody can embark on this shit. Nobody's responsible for your essential process other than you. So in this new moon, set that intention. Take a black candle. Do some releasing because black candles are made for banishment of things um, no longer wanted. Once you take that piece of paper, you write it down. I banish this. I banish that. I banish feelings for this person i banish these type of habits you burn it on that candle and you flush that motherfucker down to the toilet and you tell it goodbye because if y'all don't get on these frequencies um y'all gonna be like the dead the dead people who are experiencing depression and who are experiencing anxiety and they don't know what the fuck is going on why because they're out of tune with their spirit they're out of tune with who they really are but if you're watching this video you, you know better it's a, like i said it's a reason why i get the clients that i do it's the reason why y'all contact me because 
I have something that y'all need and we're on the same frequency, okay? And I don't want y'all to be caught up like the fucking world dealing with all these internal problems and don't know where they fuck they're coming from. I am one of the messengers here on this planet. Every messenger is different. That doesn't mean one messenger is different from another messenger. It's just we're all different expressions of the divine. Therefore, you're going to get different messages. All right? So, go inward. Reassess whatever's going on. How did, what did I do to myself to get here? Feel the feels. Allow yourself to be vulnerable, even with if it's not with other people, be vulnerable with yourself. You can feel pain, but don't stay there. And know that in order, if you want to get the things that you desire, you're going to have to go through some shit. You're going to have to suffer. Because what you want, shout out to Mook, because Mook said this. What you want, you have to be in the spirit to prepare you for to sustain your manifestation. So let's say, for example, I wanted to manifest a house or prosperity. It's something within me now that has to grow through something. So I can be in the spirit to sustain my prosperity or to sustain, sustain my abundance or sustain my purpose in helping others. Okay. And that shit ain't going to be easy. The law of attraction, that shit's easy. Okay. But the reason why people not getting what they want the time that they want it is because right now you're not at the spirit or you're not where you need to be to receive it. Because if you were to get it right now, nine times out of ten... You wouldn't be able, you wouldn't have the spirit to sustain it. You wouldn't have the spiritual, the mental capacity to sustain it. So you have to go through an initiation process. You have to. It's vital. If you want what you want. And no one can do this shit for you. No one can save you. No one can face your trauma. No one can make you go deep within yourself and ask yourself and reassess what is no longer serving me why do i keep getting in the same cycles why do i keep experiencing this nobody can do that but you but like i said in the midst of your pain there's a seed for your strength and in that pain you transform that shit into power that is the message from scorpio In your deepest pain is your greatest power. Waiting to be discovered. But you gotta find that motherfucker. Alright? So let go of what is holding you back. Let go of what you do not need. And you know what the fuck you don't need. You have to get out of comfortability. Comfortability is a hell of a drug. But if you're trying to have a certain life, if you're trying to make a certain impact on the world, if you're trying to have a, a family, if you're trying to have, you know, whatever it is that your heart desires, you have to be prepared for it. It's not just going to be given to you. It's going to be given to you, yes, but you're going to have to work for it. Not in the way that you think you're going to work for it in the physical plane, but you have to maintain the spirit to get what you ask for, to sustain it. And that requires discipline. That requires um, being steady in your uh, self-evaluations. Doing this shit constantly, honestly. So turn off the fucking TV. Put your motherfucking phone down. And go within. So... That is all I wanted to share. This video is very lengthy, but uh, I think it makes up for my time uh, in being absent. Uh, if you do want to learn about uh, more about Pluto and where Pluto is in your birth chart and what area of your life do you transform, um, contact me for birth chart readings, natal chart readings, and even tarot card readings. I got you. This is why I'm here. I'm here to serve you, okay, in the midst of my ascension. 
all right i knew why the fuck i came here i knew what the fuck i was doing when i signed that motherfucking contract to reincarnate in this vessel so let me do my job with that being said i love y'all so much like i said thank y'all for rocking with me um i appreciate it so much bye